What's up guys, this is Curtis, and welcome back to the channel. Today we're talking about one of the hottest stocks during the SPAC mania that has fallen from grace, and that stock is Butterfly Networks. The stock was valued as high as $27 a share, but is now back down to about $10 a share. Clearly the market does not know how to value this company, so what are their long-term prospects, and can they live up to the once lofty hype? Well, let's find out. We'll first go over a breakdown of what the company does, and in this video we'll go through the bull case, and in the next video we'll go through the bear case. All right. So what does Butterfly Network actually do? They make a handheld ultrasound machine that plugs into a smartphone or tablet to display the image. This machine has many applications. Anyone with a kid knows that an ultrasound machine can be used to see inside a woman's womb to view the baby, but an ultrasound machine can also be used to diagnose conditions in the heart, blood vessels, liver, gallbladder, spleen, pancreas, kidneys, bladder, uterus, ovaries, eyes, thyroid, and many more. An ultrasound can also be used to detect injuries in soft tissue, and more on this later. This company is part of a reverse merger with Longview Acquisition Corp in 2020 and started trading under the new ticker BFLY in Q1 of 2021. As part of the SPAC deal, the company received $414 million and an additional $175 million from the Pipe investment. For those that aren't aware, SPAC stands for Special Purpose Acquisition Company and Pipe stands for Private Investment Public Equity. So that's a quick overview of the company. Now how about the bull case? Let's get into that now. The bull case for Butterfly Networks starts like it does for many growth companies, Total Addressable Market, TAM. They note in their November investor presentation that the total addressable market they're going after right now is $8 billion. But they also expect to expand it materially by meaningfully growing each of the following point of care, geographic reach, and use cases. Let's get into each of these because this is what really excites investors about this stock. Let's first start by talking about expanding the point of care. Now current ultrasound machines can range from $1,000 for a small handheld device up to $200,000 for a car device. Now the Butterfly Network machine is not as cheap as $1,000, but the founders say it does compare very well with a $10,000 machine. By being cheaper, portable device, it is more feasible for healthcare workers to carry this device around with them instead of wheeling around a large machine. This allows them to examine more people and examine them quicker than with a standard device. The expanded point of care locations would be pre-hospital, urgent care, long-term care, at home, or on this later, dialysis centers, and veterinarians. Next is to expand the geographic reach. According to Butterfly Networks, about two-thirds of the world has no access to medical imaging. By providing a more affordable option, medical workers around the world can be able to use this device to treat their patients. While this is financially an untapped market and will be great for the company, this is also just a great innovation for the world and will hopefully save countless lives. And last but not least, we have use cases. As we can see from the slide, there are many areas of the body that use an ultrasound. I also want to point out the needle viz too. This allows doctors to actually see the needle they are placing in the patient's arm to make it easier to find the vein. The next major catalyst here for the bulls are the new products and the product's new target market. As we can see here from this slide, they plan to launch the new IQ for the home sometime this year. However, as of the writing of this script and the filming of this video, I did not see it on their website, so I think it's going to be probably sometime in 2022 that it's released. However, on their Q2 report, they did release a study demonstrating the feasibility of patient self-exams with Butterfly. We can also see here that they plan to release a wearable device sometime in 2023. So that begs the question then, if they're trying to expand into new markets, what is their ultimate total addressable market? This slide demonstrates that they are initially targeting a population of 3 million doctors and will then target an additional 5 million in the nursing and midwives field. The CDC in 2009 estimated that at least 133 million Americans have at least one chronic illness. While not all these chronic illnesses require a medical device to monitor, Butterfly Networks estimates the market to be 25 million urinary incontinence patients, 5 million chronic heart failure patients, and about half a million dialysis patients. If we add the initial markets of the doctors, midwives, and nurses, that gives us 3 million plus 5 million is 8 million total devices for the current existing product on the market. This number excludes veterinarians, and that was excluded from their initial target audience. However, I think they saw a good response from them initially and have decided to go after this market. And according to my research, there's about a million veterinarians throughout the country. So if you use a similar 25% as their target audience, that adds another quarter million to the 8 million we already discussed earlier for a total population of 8.25 million. So that's 8.25 million times about $2,000 per device is a little over $16 billion of revenue just from device sales alone. So now if we get into the subscription service for each of these products, that's $400 per device per year 
that adds another about $3.3 billion of revenue per year. So now if we go to the wearable sides of things, we're gonna add the same size of the markets, the 25 million plus the five million plus a half million, assume 25% of that again is our target audience of these populations. That gets us to a little over seven and a half million as a target audience. And since this is a future product, they do not have any listings for how much this will cost or what the subscription service will be. So for my calculations, we're gonna assume it's gonna be a thousand dollar device and $200 a year for the subscription service. This could change, but there's no information right now. So that's what we're gonna use. So for device sales, that's just gonna be a thousand times a 7.625 million for $7.625 billion of revenue. And for the subscription, it's gonna be that same 7.625 million times $200 a year is gonna be a little over $1.5 billion. So keep in mind too that these numbers combine both the annual recurring revenue in the form of subscriptions and also the device sales, which are not gonna be on an annual basis. It will have to be divided by some sort of timeline and how quickly we assume they're gonna be repurchased. So if we look at total device sales, we're at about $24 billion. And if we assume again that a device is gonna be replaced once every five years, we're gonna to to divide that 24 by five to be just a little bit under four, sorry, just a little bit under $5 billion. So now if we wanna to come together with the total yearly estimated annual revenue that they could ultimately get to, we're gonna take this new number of 4.8 billion of annual device sales and then add that to the subscription service for the total devices and add that again to the subscription service for the wearables. And that gets us to just under $10 billion. And it bears repeating once again, these numbers are all very rough estimates, but this should give us at least an order of magnitude of how big the company could ultimately be revenue wise. And for a quick comparison here, we're gonna take Medtronic and use their market cap to revenue multiple to get a really rough estimate of how big $10 billion can get to. So for Medtronic, they're at about five times revenue. So if we take the five times our $10 billion, that gets us to about a $50 billion company. So with that calculation, it looks like the company has a long way to go since they're valued at about $2 billion currently, which means they could probably 25X from where they are right here, if you believe these numbers are gonna to come to fruition down the road in the next five to 10 years, let's say. But that's not the whole story, right? There's always a bear case. And so in the next video, we're going to look at that. So that's it for the bull case of Butterfly Networks. If you enjoyed this video, please leave a like. Don't forget to subscribe for more content. And I'll see y'all next time.